Welcome back to the Spectre Creative Channel, and big shocker for people who haven't been watching this channel very much, we're doing a video about toys and toy making. Well, actually, specifically about toy making and the process. I've done a lot of videos about how toys are made, the different steps, things like tooling, things like uh, figuring out mix ratios, but one thing we haven't really talked about is how objects actually become toys. At what point is something a toy? When is it just, you know, a prototype or a drawing or an idea to the point that it actually physically becomes a toy? Well, a lot of the stages in making a toy are well known to collectors. For example, the sculptors, right? Like the Four Horsemen studio design, they are toy sculptors. They're the ones who actually create the, the, the first prototype, the sculpt of the toy. And then there's people that are toy designers, like David Vonner here. They're the ones who come up with the original idea that then gets passed along to the sculptors to actually sculpt. But today I want to talk a little bit about the unsung heroes of toy making. The people that actually take inanimate objects and figure out how to turn them into toys. And the person I'm talking about, of course, is the engineer. And no, I mean... By toy engineer, I, I, I don't mean like, you know, the guy goes in your train set. I mean the engineer, the person who, who figures out how toys are put together and then can extrapolate how they need to be produced in order to be assembled. Actually, they are a lot like an engineer. They're the ones who are driving the toy making process. It may not start with them, but it definitely ends with them. And they're the ones who have to take the creative idea that can go from a piece of paper or a 3D model or a clay sculpt and actually turn it into a toy. So let's talk a little bit about that and what it's like being a toy engineer. I've had the privilege to work with quite a few of them. So most toys start something like this, a sculpt. Now, I know this looks like an action figure, it looks like something that you should be able to pose, but it's a sculpt. And, well, actually, maybe this is a bad example because it's a sculpt of a toy that doesn't get articulation. All right, let's take a step back. So, when toys are tooled, they have to be broken up into pieces that can be assembled. And it's the toy engineer's job to figure out how the toy gets assembled so that it can be broken up into a tool because you're going you need the tool pieces that will come together someone like bill benicky who's a good friend of mine and a colleague i got to work with him for many years at mattel he's a toy designer so what a toy designer is going to do is just literally come up with the idea for the toy and this could be as simple as a drawing or a doodle or a concept that's pitched using powerpoint slides and usually it'll be followed up with something like a B-sheet, which calls out the colors, has what's called turns, meaning front, side, and back views of a figure, showing where the action features might be, where the articulation should be. But this is not an articulated toy. This is a drawing of an articulated toy. Now, some designers are also sculptors, usually when it has to do with 3D modeling on a computer. And 3D modeling can be done with a variety of software, and it's usually used to go directly from sculpt to prototype, and it sometimes uh, eliminates steps. But not every toy is done in 3D modeling. There's a lot of toys that are still done by hand. Sometimes when it is 3D modeled, again, the toy designer can play a part in that, but if you need to sculpt a toy by hand, and... Honestly, the ones that are sculpted by hand tend to have a lot more life. And that's when you actually have to go to a sculptor, someone who's talented in doing this, and it's usually not the designer. I'm not knocking digital design at all, but there is something different about actually sculpting a figure piece by piece and essentially having a human hand touch it. It's basically an art form. It's like creating a sculpture. And that's actually really accurate because... This is a sculpture of a toy. It's not an articulated toy. It looks like an articulated toy. This is the thing being sculpted, if you will. But you can see he's made of clay, and there's no articulation. It's the same with play sets. When the Four Horsemen did Castle Grey Skull, it was also sculpted out of clay, just like they sculpt action figures. Uh, granted, it was larger, and it took more pieces, and it took a lot more time, but just like that thing action figure we were looking at from uh, Marvel Select... 
Castle Grayskull here was sculpted by hand, out of clay, piece by piece. And that's sometimes why when you do a sculpt by hand, it has a little bit more life because it's coming from the human touch versus being digitally created on a computer. All right, so that's how a sculpt is made. But as I noted, sculpts can't move. They're not articulated. They look articulated because they have what are called cuts, which are where the joints would be. But if you tried to move them, they would fall apart because there's nothing holding them together. A perfect example is when we had figures that we would show off at conventions. So apologize for using Mighty Spectre again, but you'll see why I'm using him as an example. This looks like he should be articulated, right? He's in a glass case. You can see the cuts on the arms and the legs of where you'd be able to move him. But if you look closely, you will see that he's not articulated. This is a statue of the Mighty Spectre. Now, it's an action figure scale, and it's painted like an action figure, and it looks like an action figure. But again, if you tried to move him, he would fall apart because he's held together by pegs. So the reason I use Mighty Spectre is because I actually have a prototype Mighty Spectre the horseman gave me as a gift. They painted him bronze like a statue. So I'm using him as an example because I can pull this statue apart and show you how he's held together by pins and not by joints. So if you tried to move those figures you see in the glass case, this is what you would see, is that different parts of the body are just resting on top of each other and are held together by internal pins. You can see the white area that's not painted. This is the resin of the prototype, so it's not actually cast in plastic. It's just a resin figure that is assembled, much like the Statue of Liberty is assembled, or a lot of other statues are done this way. Even the ancient Egyptians assembled statues piece by piece. So what the engineer does is they're the one who take a non-articulated statue now, it could be sculpted to look like a toy, and you could see where the joints should be, but they're going to then interpret that sculpt. They're going to break it apart, and well, I mean, not literally, not like with a hammer, but, you know, through their skill set of being an engineer, and they're going to figure out where the joints need to be so that this non-articulated statue is now an action figure, or a toy, a doll, uh, you know, a car, um, any type of toy that has to have moving parts. Starts off as a non-moving statue, and now the engineer is the one who adds where all the articulation points need to be in, you know, the different natural breaks, like the elbows, or the shoulders, or the hands for an action figure, or, you know, could be the neck, or, you know, wheels for a car. And there's lots of different choices in types of joints. There's everything from ball joints to socket joints to T-squares. Different articulation points and different types of articulation are used for different types of toys and even different types of figures. So, if you have something that's a statue but you want that statue to be articulated, you need an engineer to come along and have the knowledge of how that figure, that statue, essentially can be translated from a non-moving prototype into something that can be posed, that can be moved, that can be articulated, and will actually work and can be assembled from a mechanical labor standpoint. So every single one of those pieces has to be put together and the type of joints used are determined by the engineer for stability, for usability, for play, for articulation, for essentially to make this actually be a toy. They have to understand every single piece. So their skill set is being able to see a non-articulated statue, sculpt, prototype, and be able to break it apart into all the different pieces that have to be tooled and then assembled. So one last example to kind of show how this really hasn't changed in the last 40 years, here is the sculpt of Hoth Leia, right, from Empire Strikes Back 1980. So not articulated, it is a sculpt, it is a wax sculpt done in wax as opposed to clay, that's still a lot of toys are done in wax, but they were done more so. And then on the right you see the final figure that's painted, so that's an actual production figure that can articulate and move. So to understand and what the engineer does, essentially that step between the two, between the wax sculpt and the final product, is when the engineer comes along and says, okay, how can we take this body and what type of articulation is needed in order to achieve the play value that is intended by the toy designer? And that's basically what the engineer does. They're finding out the best way to make a toy function according to the design desires of the 
original toy designer, and then taking the toy sculptor's non-articulated sculpt and adding joints, adding pieces that are needed so it can break apart into the tool, be assembled by labor, and become a toy. Now, statues are really cool, but they are frozen in place. They don't move. They are in, you know, they're a moment in time, if you will. And this is no different from Michelangelo's David to, you know, buying action figure or statues today. But if you want to be able to move the toy and pose it however you want, you can't use a statue. You need an action figure. And that's why toy engineers tend to be the uh, unsung heroes, because they are the ones... You know, it's, it's the sculptors and the designers tend to be the celebrities. They're the ones we all know, but it's the engineer that turns them into toys and lets us take that, you know, that Spider-Man figure and pose him exactly how we want, in exactly the environment we want, with exactly other figures around him and create that moment that we want to display or play with our toy. Without an engineer, we couldn't do this. So appreciate your toy engineer because... They are amazing, and they are very, very talented, and they tend to be, uh, you know, sort of the underdogs in the toy industry, understanding how to take any object and turn it from concept to plaything or collectible. And that is an amazing skill set, and I have so much respect for all the ones I've worked with. If you like this video, I hope it was insightful in another aspect of toy creation. Share it with others, and... Uh, Leave a comment below, a subscription, a bell ring, all that stuff for the algorithm. I comment back for every comment. Thanks for being part of it, and uh, I'll see you in the comment section and in the next video. Thanks for watching.